Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. We're not splitting up, we're just going to go in two different groups. I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Hey. And Jonathan. I guess I'm group two. Uh, and always, off the top, Luke, short and sweet, what do you think of the movie? I didn't particularly like this movie. Okay. Jonathan? I thought it was alright. Um, I like this movie. I, I think it's fun. Uh, for reasons we can we can get into, uh, I I guess we can start with Luke. Why are, are there any like glaring reasons why you didn't like this movie? Um, there there were a few. I mean, one of the things I didn't like about the movie, obviously, I mean, it's not the movie's fault. And if anything, they should get praise for doing it on such a low budget. But I felt like uh, specifically the audio quality was poor, mm-hmm. um, and it made it hard for what the movie was trying to do, which I felt like was, you know, this should be tried again on like a very much, much bigger budget. Maybe not the exact same story, but when you have multiple people talking uh, simultaneously, mm-hmm. the audio quality isn't like, not necessarily, it doesn't have to be great, but if it's not good, I felt like it was hard for me to, to listen in on things. But then again, I, you know, I'm just an asshole with bad hearing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it should be said uh, this this movie was made on fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's, that's it's, actually it's, impressive. They be, yeah, they should be commended for that, especially for the actors they were able to get, um, which they're all great actors. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like you know, as far as the whole movie is essentially a bottle episode to keep the budget extremely, extremely. Yes, it uh, takes place in one location. Well, it's like yeah. roughly one location. There's some maneuvering, but. It is all one house. There's a there's an outside location. Yeah, outside I felt, it. but it is the actual outside of the house that it's happening in, and the house is the director's yeah. house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He has a yeah. nice house. Yeah. Some of the uh, some of the cuts, I felt like there are really some jarring movie. cuts. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Really, like I did not. I was not. This is a really movie. long, short, and sweet. No, no, um, we did the short and sweet. We went around. Now we're talking about the movie. Oh, that's true. Uh, but it's not to say there's not good in this movie, and I, I like the idea of of what transpires in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, what, there was just a few things that, like to me, were a little goofy. But uh, you know, when all put together, I, I definitely don't hate this movie. I don't even dislike this movie, but I couldn't say that I liked it. I also watched this with my girlfriend, and my girlfriend gives this movie a negative ten. Really? Really? What? She hated I didn't it. think she it was out of the room after like fifteen minutes. Like, she, she oh, just, before the movie starts, she walked out. <laughs> like, I, I thought that it was overall good. It was just like uh, there was some things holding it back, is what I felt. Yeah. So and like not budget related too. Um, one of the things that kind of, you know, I, I mean, it, it was yeah, economy of story, storytelling, et cetera, et cetera. But at the beginning of the movie, when she mentions like, oh well. You know, I remember, uh, or I remember this story about this comet from the 1900s where, you know, and I kind of like knew where the movie was going to go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, just from that phrase or from what she had mentioned. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of the point, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the fact that like she just knew this as a, someone who doesn't really you know study history other than that and then i think the the bigger the the bigger sin for me was uh was it doug doug is not a character it was was (laughs) hugh hugh's uh brother Uh uh-huh i feel like that was it's ridiculous like the whole and then like to have essentially nothing come of it um that was probably my biggest gripe to have nothing come of what hugh's brother telling him oh. like, hey, if happens during this comment you should be careful and then like to have the decoherence and coherence um uh you know what highlight do you mean, what do you mean nothing yeah came? what do you mean that's like, literally that's what that, happened that's yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but, like it it was only there to serve the story you you like it's not like his brother Really? Are you saying that his brother like never offered any like his brother wasn't a character that entered the not only that but like so would you have preferred if I don't know, Amir I don't know. had just said those things then like I mean I would prefer someone who had some actual like not experience in it because obviously it would be this weird event 
but something I, I felt like M. If I think that I think that that was what his character was supposed to be. It was like somebody who had he didn't have experience, but his brother had kind of warned him about it in some sense. I think that that was kind of the point of that. Yeah, like, but he ends up being, and we'll get into it. But he ends up being essentially one of the major like factors in fucking everything up. Yeah, because he does uh, essentially exactly so the opposite of what. This is actually a. Uh... Is something I wanted to bring up with this movie. Um, th- uh, this movie, I, I think, is one that benefits from from rewatching. By the way, um, okay. but actually, everything is already fucked up from the start of the movie. Yeah, because yeah. the girl actually fucked it all up. Um, no, no, no. no like no, everybody was for the first time. No, 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 it's before that. When people show up to the party, they're already in the wrong houses. <clears throat> And, and the reason you can know this is because um, Nicholas Brendan, who plays uh, Mike, has a conversation with Lori. And in this conversation, uh, Mike says that he was on the TV show Roswell, and uh, he believes that Lori used to do yoga. And oh, we learned from their reactions, the Lori's seen every episode of Roswell, and he was not on the show. And this is a reference also because of the fact that uh, Nicholas Brendan played Xander in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So yeah. it's essentially, he is from an alternate history where he played on Roswell, and his Lori did yoga. So they're already in the wrong houses at the start. The only people that we know aren't in the wrong house at the start are um, Mike and Lee, because it's their house, so they obviously never pass through the comet. And then depending on when Beth and M showed up, they could potentially be in their original friend's house. Uh, but everyone else is in the wrong house from the start. Okay. Yeah, and the fact I was that- wondering, I was actually wondering when that scene was going on. I was like, "What is the point of like all of this miscommunication?" So that actually kind of well, makes it cooler. Yeah, that that makes it a little bit cooler. But again, I, I felt like it was such a because normal people do not have these conversations that they had in this. I know they tried really hard to like make it seem like more of a flow and kind of. I think a lot of the dialogue's fairly genuine. I, uh, that's what I thought as well. And I, I also I, think that. Like, Here's the thing. Like you I, said, that because of the low budget, that kind of worked to its detriment. Also, yeah, they, they, they should not budget, have but... focused on that. I mean, here's what I think, right? When, when you're having a conversation, when, I, when I'm at like a party with like eight people, right? We do not all listen to one person speak um, and then all like v- verbally react at the same time and be like, oh, really? Like, I can all, like, it does not happen. I usually just have a conversation with like, Usually there's two or three mini conversations that get created out of that. It's not as simple as just like this person is kind of clearly we're focusing on this person's conversation, but like another like well, other so can I ask a question? I Did you have a problem with the dialogue? Because I didn't. I wouldn't say I had like a a major problem, but I definitely felt like it was it was doing too much for what it was. So I, okay. I actually disagree with you because actually people do split off in this movie and talk over each other, which you mentioned earlier. So it does happen. And then um, also at a party where someone who hasn't been around in a while, which none of these characters have really been all together for a while, you absolutely do listen to people and catch up. Yeah, but that's not what they did. What I mentioned was that like someone on the other side of the room when like m mentions the meteor especially i noticed it was kind of cringy that happens though like if something really interesting gets brought up in a group like everybody will kind of hone their focus when they know everybody else i'm saying that the way that they all independently reacted was as if the director said like just react to this weirdly like it's kind of like the scene in like Futurama, where they're, the guy is trying to make the movie, and he's like, oh, let's have some pie, people throwing pies in the background. Um, okay, this, this like, brings me to another point about the making of this movie. Um, people weren't really given guidelines on how to react to specific things. Um, people were given their character's knowledge, and that's it. The, this mo- this movie that. was shot sequentially, and nobody was informed of anything. The 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 lady who plays M, uh, Emily uh, Aldani, she didn't even know she was the main character of this movie. That is really cool. They that are, is cool. And so, like, they didn't know that um, Hugh and Amir were going to knock on the door. Um, in this, so that all their frightened reactions is them 
genuinely reacting to a sudden knock on the door by them. Uh, when That's Kevin, so cool. when Kevin wants to leave the house, he was given the character note. Kevin needs to leave the house. And M was given the character note, do not let Kevin leave the house. And that's why they have the confrontation at the door. The The making of this movie, I think, is, is very fascinating in how they yeah, kept I, everything away from I everyone. Watched little, I watched the little, you know, like, um, you know, how this movie was made, kind of explaining what, what happens after I'd watched the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is, it is cool. I, I like a lot of the ideas, a lot of the liberties they took with it. And I feel like if given a bigger budget, I feel like it would have been better, but a lot of it too. I mean, we mentioned this off uh, podcast just briefly, but the, the quality of the video, yes, especially for the, for the video being as dark as it, as it is, it's unfortunate. Yeah. I do want to speak up. I feel like first off, any, any, nighttime scene is hard to do for even like high higher budget yeah. films this film did like the cardinal sin of like if you have a nighttime shot you don't actually want to use the real lighting like you want to have yeah either like a blue light that shows everybody everything and then you like color and post it, yeah exactly or you light it and then you just bring down your your iso on your camera like you do, you want to be able to see it all and this movie severely fucked up in, the, in almost all of its so scenes. the problem with that so th- that would be true of the um like going to the car scenes and stuff like that the problem is specifically the shots where they're looking at the other house down the block which obviously is the same house um mm-hmm. They mention this darker patch in the middle. So if they had done artificial lighting, they then would have had to create a darker patch in the middle to. No, no, ab- absolutely, there. absolutely. For that, you can have that. Yeah, but I'm would, talking like in the house when like ever it went dark. Like I, don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, I was not a big fan of how things looked. I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, the lighting is uh, not great. Well, I would have just wished that you know a better camera was used because I can tell it was it was. I, I mean, like, of course. A better camera always makes things easier, but you can really do good work with like, you know, not excellent equipment. It was uh, it was it wasn't the camera itself. It's not like oh the lens was bad. It was the bit rate of the video. And I I just to double check, I tried on multiple different streaming services, and they were all like ooh I can see chunks everywhere. Like, yeah. and that's to me that that that's bothersome. And I know like. I mean that's fair. It's 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 not a knock on the story. Obviously, it's not like it's not even a knock into like the camera work. It's yeah, I, I feel like it. some of the camera work was really like a lot. Like there was definitely a lot of like kind of found footagey esque. That is one thing I kind of wanted to bring up. Like, did they want it to be found footage like because it felt like it? But then like obviously no character was you know filming it. I don't know. I was a little confused at first because I was like, oh, this is found footage because it was like basically freehand, like the camera was shaking all over the place, which added to the suspense, which made me later think that it was just like a, a decision to like add suspense. Um, but uh, yeah, I was a little confused there. Yeah, I'm going to less. I'm going to reference the IMDb trivia probably a lot in this. Um, all right. it, it mentions why the cameras are so shaky. It is not. Uh, a stylistic choice is not supposed to be on footage. They just told the actors they were... Because, again, a lot of this is improvised. The, they were just told what they needed to do, and they were free to move around or say what they needed to or what they felt to. Um, so the shakiness is because the actors are allowed to go wherever, and they had to move the camera to follow them, yeah. and they didn't have it on a mount. You know what's wild is, obviously, that's it's from 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think about this, like today, if you were going to redo this today, they could just have like $100 webcams in various places. I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, they have like really cool equipment where, uh, like it attaches to your body for like a steady yeah. cam. Um, yeah, but that stuff, uh, the budget is 50 K. <laughs> so, right. But I'm saying like, um, I, th- it's, it's easier than you would think to get your, your hands on equipment like that uh yeah like a gimbal when, when you're out there yeah but but um, yeah um again at 50k it's amazing how well this turned out especially given that they did it all in four days 
Uh, five like days, I'm, but yeah. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's all completely negative. I just didn't like some of the stylistic choices in this movie. Yeah. I, I didn't really have too much problems with... Uh, I like the, the visuals like- and the audio wasn't the best, but like the the shots themselves like like it filled me with an emotion like the shots did so like that is really kind of what i gauge like the uh success or the failure of artistic intent i guess is just like if it made if the shot itself made me feel something like not the not the actors not what was being said and i think that this movie did make me feel extremely tense like throughout most of it i think it was mostly the uh, maybe i'm wrong but it's the camera work and the cuts alone where I don't think they intended to do that. And I really wish, and this is where I think the movie is at its worst is the first, not even act, but like the first, maybe 10 minutes, I would say are very like, they, they still have the vibe of like the end of the show. And obviously you're, you're in the thing already, like Brennan said, but like, the initial 10 minutes should have been a lot more relaxed and maybe like gotten to know the characters a bit more. That's anyway, that's, that's what I would have changed. But I, I think it's intentional because the movie sort of actually, I just realized something as I'm saying this, the movie tries to start you off on the back foot because even as we're first introduced to M, she's having a conversation with Kevin in which he says, we need to talk. Yeah, yeah, and you have no idea what the yeah. what ends up happening there. And I, I think that's I thought that was gonna mean something. You know? I mean, it did. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's also it evidence that uh, she's in the wrong house because he doesn't remember the phone call. Also said. Yeah. That. Yeah, but it wasn't like. I felt like it would have been cool if it was like a all the way back to the beginning, or something. You know what I mean? Like it, they could have went for more. Yeah. Um, my point. biggest issue is definitely like some of the early cuts are bad and like it's just a full cut it's, to black it's different specifically, scene yeah, yeah specifically yeah. early you yeah. know and i mean it gets better the movie like grew on me i originally was like oh yeah my girlfriend's right this is not great and then by the end i was like okay this isn't bad like yeah but there were things about this i don't know <laughs> like exa- like that's how i feel like i don't know i like the i like the idea i like the what they were able to do within like a bottle episode of a movie i mean it almost had like cube vibes and the fact that they you know low budget uh um you know it's more about the acting and let's tell a story around that but i did you know enjoy this so speaking of actors, you said that you thought everybody did like super stellar. I kind of disagree. I felt like most people were just kind of okay. Really? Who, who didn't you like? Um, I mean, like nobody stood out to me as being excellent. I guess is how I. I think it. M and Mike are both. I, I would say stand out good. Really? Because I don't know. There was just a couple of lines from M that were clearly ADR, which absolutely hurt her. Um, so like her performance was probably great, but then, you know, the mic quality was kind of garbage and then they had her re-record it, but where it just didn't feel like it existed in, in, in the moment where it was said. Yeah, that's like fair. There, a couple, there was a couple where she was outside and I don't know if that is really fair to put on her when it was clearly a, a problem with the budget, but, uh, there was just a couple moments where like every character kind of brought me out of the moment, I guess. I feel like Mike brought me out of the moment the most of any of the characters by far, actually. Really? Was that? Um, he was just like, what if the guy's over there drunk? I don't know. Like, what if Mike over there is drunk? What if I'm drunk over there? I, 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 I do want to clarify. I don't think anybody was terrible. Yeah, I, just, I, thought, I, I thought he was just goofy for like, and I don't know if his character is just supposed to be goofy, obviously. Well, he, he is the goofy guy in the friend group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but you're not supposed to be... I don't know. At the same time, it's like he's not the same since he, you know, came but, here. I mean, he's a recovering alcoholic, so that's sort of the point. <laughs> but then he, I don't know. But look, anyway, this is what I'm trying to get at. I felt like everyone else was actually pretty good. I, I didn't have a problem with anyone else. I thought he was 
maybe trained as like a regular actor and the other ones hadn't had as much experience at this. You're talking about Mike? Yeah. Again, Mike was Xander on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's been acting for Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like he's he's had like a regular acting gig and this one was more of just like just do your thing, you know what I mean? (laughs) Um I I thought M was good. I thought the actor who played Kevin was good. I thought Amir was good. Like interesting that uh Amir um is uh I don't know if he's acted in anything else, but he's actually the writer for the movie. He was put in as a mole to keep scenes on track. Nice. nice. That's a, he did a really good job because he never Oh he really he has acted. acted in some other things. Well I just meant like he never really like uh uh, railroaded the conversation at all yeah again i think people did especially for like how this was made i think the characters did a really good job and obviously some of that probably was cutting room floor um but yeah he didn't have to jump in very much or if he did they cut it out <laughs> no, but I, I really thought that you know that none of the except for mike was probably the only one that i legit was like no uh, i don't have a, i didn't have a problem with anybody in this i just never thought anybody was super i don't know great i guess yeah, like everybody right. had their moments where i was like oh that was a good moment yeah, and then they would also they would also have an equal moment one of them like, had oh, like this great. moment where they were yelling where you're like wow they're so good you know <laughs> or like when they're like upset or anything i can agree with that yeah. but none of them all of them were above serviceable like yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah all of them were good yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. they did a they did I, a good I job with that. casting yeah for sure mm-hmm so do we want to talk about uh, the plot a little bit now? Sure. I, I, I am happy to talk about this movie because yeah. I'm a big fan. I, I was super into the plot and like, I just, I don't know. I, I, I just think that, um, I think that a lot, a lot of it was, uh, I, I think that everybody in the movie acted not like an adult and it kind of pissed me off the entire movie. Like, it was such a good story, and I liked it, but, like, all the characters were just so stupid that I couldn't like any of them. Yeah, I I feel that way. So, some characters I don't agree with, but, um, yeah, definitely some of it like doesn't Rory make sense. I feel like and M did not act like adults, actually, more than anyone else. And then Mike was just kind of, like, super goofy more than anything else. Yeah, so Mike's Mike's being goofy at the start, and then he's sort of having a mental breakdown at the end. Um, that's fine that makes sense so that makes sense i so the one person i i get like it most bothered me in the movie is like so a lot of the time when people leave the house it's for a reason right like Mm -hmm. you and amir leave at first and that's a perfectly logical reason to leave he wants to get in touch with his brother they leave to get the book makes sense they've got a book in the car when i don't remember why he even does it but kevin decides to leave and m even says to him or, or no, no, it's when they're going around the table uh, planning out and, and drawing the numbers on the pictures. Yeah. And Lee says, well, why don't we all just stay inside? And Kevin says, staying inside is not realistic. It's like, what the fuck do you mean it's not realistic? You yeah, just have to stay inside for a couple hours in the house that you yeah. plan to be yeah. in? Yeah. Well, see, I, I think that I think that not like, make any sense because at the same time it was like, all right, M was already piecing it together. Like, yeah no we're already totally fucked which is when yeah. she figured out that she's the main character <laughs> that that scene when, mean, when she's doing the numbers is when she figured out she's the main character it all it also though like i mean even hugh i was like look your brother has told you not to fuck with shit and the first thing you do when you figure out that there's a house with like your clones i guess is you fuck with shit like that is the silliest thing and i and i hate how nobody decided to go meet themselves like uh, they see each other and they just run like i don't know i feel like at least somebody should be like especially at some point since they know i mean they must exactly, have like, okay. seen with exactly. two mics that are tied up okay yeah. I have to, never happened in the movie all right i have to answer Which two different points stuff. about what you said uh sure the first is the hue point hue actually is pretty rational he does not want to fuck shit up when he figures out it's clones he, he leaves the first time to go over there and, and try to use their phone. Which and the second time, he's up. also leaving to try to get to the phone. And he there's even a line. Uh, somebody, I don't know if it's his wife or it's somebody else, but they say, 
your brother told you to stay inside and contact him. Um, which one takes precedence? And he's like, well, I think contacting him. He literally says that. And then no, later... No, no, no. That's fine why he left. But once he gets there and sees his clone, he decides to fuck with shit. Because the entire plot kind of hinges around most Hughes. Wait, Hugh didn't see himself. Was... No, he didn't see himself, but he's still fucking with things. Because yeah, he, he decides doesn't... to take the book and take the and box. It, it, no, Amir takes I, the box. I actually agree with Jonathan here is because... Oh, you're talking about the oh. by his goddamn brother. Okay, you're, told, you're, told you're talking about the Hugh who's in the wrong house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all Hughes are in the wrong house in the movie that we. Right, saw. I thought you were talking about Hugh when he's leaving the house, not Hugh when he's. No, out no, 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 no. Hugh in, in the wrong house initially he annoyed he, me. It's told by his brother, like, don't leave the house. No, 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 no but they they address the house, that in the movie. I understand leaving the house. I understand it's like that was a bad decision, but it was a decision that like. I could see his he was yeah he was weighing alive. the two options stay inside exactly. talk to my that's brother. totally it's like it's still okay. like he made I see the what wrong decision now. but that's fine but the fact that he he sees what's happening and he goes you know what I'm gonna do <laughs> like that's the moment so like, no. uh he takes the box because at that point they think there's only two houses yeah no that, like, so I he understand won't... why everything happened and like from that point it's fine but like the act of doing it I think was the most illogical thing where he's like, we need to get one up on these guys because they're you, you could, you, I think any rational person in that instance would knock on the door and be like, um, I'm not the Hugh that left. What the hell is well, going you, on? Hold on. You can't knock on the door though. Nobody up to that point, nobody encounters themselves. Like Hugh can't introduce himself to himself. Because no, no, no. I'm saying introduce himself as not the real Hugh to the other people. Like he might be seen as crazy, but like the fact that he wants to go inside and talk to them about it is, I think, just completely ridiculous. Like he is the one who has been warned about not messing with things. And he sees that there are his friends inside this other house. He recognizes that it's not his house. And he decides that he actively wants to go inside and sabotage them. Yeah, I mean, th so that's very, that harkens to one of my issues with this movie is everyone has a very heightened, paranoid reaction to the fact yeah. that there are other things. Right. They like, yeah, that's they, what I'm they like, like assume nobody everyone's decided the to enemy. go talk to themselves and just like have, and, and, and like assume that themselves are going to think the same way as them and be like, I want to figure this out. I don't want to hurt you. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I, the, I mean, honestly, the only way. I just get past it by like everyone's just super paranoid and whether you think it's what you would do in that situation or not, I, I don't know. Everyone in this movie is very paranoid and that's, for that's sure. what's driving their actions. It didn't like, it, it kind of ruined it for me just because I think that I, don't I, know, I, I do see, agree. I, I want to see the best in people. And I think that it's kind of crazy to say that everybody would just be like fucking killing each other, but it didn't ruin it for me. Cause I could, I could see an instance where that would be true. Speaking of, uh, I can't see where everyone's killing each other. What did you think of the ending? I thought the ending was good uh, because her, 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 ki her killing herself wasn't out of the same reasonings. It was because things had gotten so out of control that she just wanted to find a, a, a reality where her boyfriend loved her and everything was fine. And at that point, I was like, that is really cool. Yeah, I mean, she's actually the character that fucks it up the most. Oh, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely. And what's weird is, you know, in that reality, there are two of her. There are th three. Well, I guess there's only two now. But three M's have crossed into that because she kills one and another one clearly enters because she, Kevin gets a call at the end. I thought it was the exact I same. Thought, I, I thought that it was the same one. Because if you look, she she gets she's like fucked up from the uh, from the drugs that she was given, and she goes to like puke in the sink. Yeah, but doesn't she kill the one? No, uh, she, I think that she tried to kill the one, but the one woke up and then called him. Like, yeah, because if you if you think about it, she would have she would have, uh, and by she I mean M Prime. No, not M. Um, Beth. So Beth would have. Uh, seen her when she took her shower at the end, which means that she es had escaped at some point during the night. She had woken up in from the. Uh... No, does she put her in the trunk? Uh, she puts her in the trunk, but then she crawled into the house. Remember, it's and then she almost had every hit trunk her. Has a, she she has put a... she put her into the trunk, and then she crawled into the house, and then 
went into the bathroom and then she smashed her head in with the uh, back of the toilet seat. Remember that? Mm. So then she finally ended up inside the bath, which M took a, a, a shower in that bathroom. Yeah, so I, I, I do agree with Luke right. that it was implied that she had escaped. Because she looks scared when she sees the other M and like tries to be like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's my personal opinion. That there's really only ever two M's within that universe. The real M and then uh, her. The R M, M prime. The real M and M prime. The director has confirmed we only ever follow M prime. So at, at least in the continuity of the movie, you never have to assume whether you're seeing a different M. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but the M in the bathtub, I think, is the same M that crawls. Yeah, it could um, be. Yeah. But that's the thing is, like, at the end of the movie, um, it's it's really impossible to say. There could be more M's fucking that's, hanging yeah, out. For because, sure. Especially because they show, like, the two Kevins being tied up that you see that it's literally just infinite possibilities where yeah. anything could go down. Especially because when she makes the decision to leave and find a better universe that means every m in a house where it's going crazy yeah. has made a decision to leave and find a better universe yeah. there are many universes with multiple m's fucking about yeah i do i do love the idea of the film i just wish that they uh, had chosen a different character to go to the house because then it would have made more sense to start the fucking with if that makes sense other than hugh you mean other than Hugh. I think that the having Hugh go is a mistake because um, he's the one who should know not to mess with things. Or if Amir had instead been the one who kind of was, who instigated Hugh into um, fucking with things. I don't know. But to be That's fair, Amir point. is the one who starts it because he takes the box. True. Amir took the box? Oh, that is yeah. true. But... but, but. Hugh was the one know. that went inside. Well, it's really in the box. Let's be honest, and it was the stapler. It, well, we don't what? we don't know what was in that box. Oh, it was, well, it actually, was no, we do know what was in the box. It was open on camera. It was a ping pong paddle. <laughs> the stapler. <laughs> that was in his. That was in that Hughes that we saw, but that was a different Hugh. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. But what would be cool is if they made multiple cuts of that movie and then dispersed them throughout the United States at different viewings. Which just the fuck with everyone. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Although it'd be a very limited fucking with everyone since like nobody talked about this movie. <laughs> but still, it would be amazing. And also if you were like it is a cool movie. Like, it's a sh- it it's a shame that it, it isn't uh known. It released in very, very few theaters, but it made yeah. its money. It, it made like a hundred and something dollars. Not a hundred and thousand dollars. I'm sure it you know, every single person who watched this movie wanted to work with these actors. I'm sure of it. Like so they, they got their like and some of them were already successful, of course, but like you didn't you didn't like the actor who played Kevin? I felt like he did pretty good. I, I don't just like it. I thought that you said that Kevin was the one that he had the most problems with. No, yeah, Kevin's the uh uh the no, loving Mike is guy. who he has the most problems with. Yeah. Oh, okay, right, right. Sorry. No, I thought that I thought that everybody was okay. I had no problems with anybody. I just didn't think that anybody was particular like no this film didn't make anybody stand out for me there was no like there were scenes where some felt better but then there was also equal amount of scenes where they felt like they were weaker and i think that that's just the way that it was filmed i don't necessarily think that that's like a showing on their skill as an actor no definitely not because they did this all in four days exactly they did it in four days but then they also didn't really have a script it sounds like so it was improv so it's like obviously you're going to improv excellent you know sometimes and sometimes you're going to have an okay time and that's sort of where i felt it was like occasionally they would be like really good and then occasionally they would just be like okay and things like so yeah i don't know it just it wasn't like it wasn't a problem for me i want to clarify it wasn't a problem for me i just don't think it's just a completely neutral stance where everybody just did good enough they were like good enough to above i would consider this movie um to go in the camp of uh, to to be to be like Highlander. What do you mean? Where I can see this working so much better in my head than how it ended up working. Interesting. But I love the idea, the ideas that were expressed. I love the, for the most part, the plot where I would change a few things to kind of maybe put more seeds in the beginning, even though there were some. Uh, 
I mean, there are a lot. I would, I would have more, and I would also have the first like ten minutes be completely dialed down, and just like made you. I think the start of the like movie needs friends. the most work. The, they, they it's hard to, to have more seeds and have it dialed down though, because yeah. like you just need disagreement to have seeds. So you could literally have like a different painting. I, I honestly think some of the dialogue does a good job of uh, conveying their friendship. Like there's like random thrown out dialogue, like when Mike gives Amir shit in a random throwaway line, where uh, I think it's when Amir agrees to go with Hugh, and he's like, "I'll go. I'm the least important." And Mike's like, oh, "At least you're finally realizing it." Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, no, I, I I thought their relationship was fine. Yeah, I just felt like it could have been it could have been a lot more calmed down. It just felt really like I guess like my biggest thing is that everybody seemed really like sensible, and this plot doesn't make sense with sensible people. You have to have people who are like yeah, that's on that's edge, that's paranoid, true. and crazy. Yeah, they and should I have had. That was my biggest. I feel like they should have had Beth driving more decisions since they set her up to be sort of you know, doing more out there shit. Like, you know, she doesn't even like standing near this door because it's the door to nowhere. Like, yeah. Well, at least that made sense plot wise towards the Also, end. like they had heroin in there or ketamine in there for like, and it, like, I get why they had it in there, but it seems like kind of random and it just never really went anywhere. I mean, it was used twice. It was, used it was, for- it was used, but it was just sort of like, I don't know. I felt like, the movie didn't it didn't serve the movie as well as it thought it did. It was just kind of there. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but no, she uses it to drug uh, yeah, the I th- other. M. I think it's all right. Like she uses it to drug the other M. It's what puts yeah. Lee to sleep for them to. But the, I think that that the her drugging the other M is the entire reason that it's there. Oh, I mean for I mean, sure. Like, well, but also every, everything else, I was like, oh, like the moment she drugged the other M, I was like, that's why it's in the movie. It's also there for the kitchen confrontation to have a like. Oh, maybe we're all imagining this type scene. But that um, would have happened anyways. Like, like you could have that happen without the drugs have, having been introduced. Like, the character was... Like, you could have just been like, Oh, you we've had, like, drug experiences before with you. Did you do it? And it would have made just as much sense. Oh, so you'd as, rather them tell, not show. That's not what I'm saying at all. That's what you just said, though. You just said they should have had a dialogue line. That's I think like, that we've had drug experiences. Sense. I think it makes just as much sense. Because, uh, like, it, it's just, just like, just because the one person used it, I don't know, it just didn't seem like enough of a reason to have it be, like, it felt like it was going to be a bigger part of it. Like, it felt like it was going to become a thing where it, like, oh, is it just a drug thing? But then at the end, you obviously know that it is. Yeah, it could have been more, I, I will say at the very least, it, it could have been more. Uh, it just open. wasn't integrated enough for me, I guess. Could have been more open at the very true. end, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was none of the movie. none of the props in this movie are very like highly stated. I would say like there's a there's a lot of things shown around about how people are in the wrong house, mm-hmm. and like it's pointed out, but it's never just like we need to. Well, I push. This I thing. love I love the whole wrong house like narrative, um, but also like I don't know. I feel like if I was there, this is also a part of like I feel like nobody in this is rational. If I discovered I was in the wrong house, I'd be like, honestly, I'm okay with that. Like, that's okay. Like, this is good enough. Yeah, I mean, up to the point, like, up to a certain point in the movie, I would agree. I, I totally get M fucking bailing at the end. Oh, shit, no, no, absolutely. Shit's gone like, that, whack that at just that makes point. Sense. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, up to a certain point, yeah, it's like, sure, these aren't the... Like, these aren't the people I started the night with, but they're still the same people, more or less. But actually, the movie shows us as well that, like, um, the universes aren't as strongly connected either. Like, yeah, yeah, she gets it, the, it she gets Mike, the ring yeah, from... There are probably universes out there where uh, Mike does not have sex with Beth. Yeah, that's fair. And she but gets again, the she gets the ring that, from the I car. I think that it's easy enough to just be like, "Oh, this universe isn't close enough for me. I'm going to leave." But because everybody is so crazy, that can't be the case. But the thing is, so all of these people in the movie are in relationships. Imagine having a partner that you now have the wrong memories with, or you don't remember things they remember. Because M gets the ring from the car that mm-hmm. Kevin gave her at the fair. And yeah. he's like, oh, I went to get... She's like, I went to get this ring from the car. And he's like, it's nice. It's showing that he does not remember giving her this ring. 
So the sure. memories in your relationship are now. But I'm I'm wrong. saying like if they yeah. were better if they were better people they could just be here's, civil here's about the, finding a, yeah. a reality like, close hey. enough. But here's the thing: at some point you're gonna have someone lie. I mean, it's only natural, especially in like M's situation where it's like, well, I either get to be in a relationship where the dude may or may not really give a fuck about me, and also like have no career. Or, <laughs> like, everything's perfect, like, in, in her eyes. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's definitely one thing when, when uh, so when she sees the other Kevin outside, it's like, yeah, that was a good, that was a good day, you know? Mm-hmm. Obviously, that may have actually been uh, Kevin Prime because she remembers going to the, uh, the fair. Where the the Kevin that's in uh, Beth and Lee's house, they he he clearly does not remember that at all. Yeah, I, I think I think we never we never see another Prime character in this movie. It's so statistically unlikely that we would ever see another Prime. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I think that all of my issues with this would be solved with one simple change: having the people who star in it or like having the main characters not be well-adjusted people. Yeah, that's fine. They, there are plenty, there are enough that aren't well-adjusted that it makes it. I mean, like there's like, everybody has their thing and like, I totally get that. But I, I think that they were. No, I agree with Jonathan. Mm -hmm. They're, they're pretty like Beth's a little out there, but she's not like batshit insane. Exactly. Like I think that Beth, if anybody would be like the person who would be like, yeah, Oh, like we need to connect with. And then like once Mike starts drinking, you can use that as a catalyst. But other than that, everyone else is pretty fucking normal in this movie. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I think that it's just, things went way too off the rails for how regular these people are. But again, I didn't dis like, I liked the movie. Uh, I just don't, I don't think that it reached its potential. I would say. Yeah, I will agree with that. That's my main. Yeah, correct. That's fair. I'm, I don't even disagree with that. If if some of these things were more realized, this would easily go into like one of my favorite movies. But it, I could I could easily see a plot like this becoming one of my favorites. But as it stands, uh, yeah, no, it's just it's just like an okay movie. Like I I would recommend it, but like I wouldn't too. I wouldn't watch it again. But it's so good on the rewatch. I, because you said that, it makes me like think about it. But I like just I just catching all the little props and stuff that are changing in the houses, and like like seeing characters react to it and not even understand what's going on. Like the glass breaking, like people literally point it out and they don't know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. All right, and but uh, I mean, I feel like I got enough of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I I movie. enjoyed my rewatches of it, but I'm also a person who rewatches movies. So okay. All right. Are we doing the ratings? Uh, yeah. If if nobody else has anything else they uh, they want to talk about, actually, I, I do want to talk about the director because um, I th- I think he's part of the reason why this works. Um, because you guys have mentioned some of the shots and stuff. Th- this is the guy who was brought on as a consultant for uh, Pirates of the Caribbean: Curse of the Black Pearl, and is credited with a lot of the standout shots in that movie. So, mm. Great director. Yeah, I was actually surprised with how open um, you explained everything having been for production, like how well some of the shots turned out. Yeah, like they really knew how to how to like get it done, you know. Yeah, it's it's an incredible feat, and his wife was pregnant, so she agreed uh-huh. to let them use the house if they could get it done in five days. <laughs> she was like eight and a half months pregnant. She was originally supposed to play Lee uh, in, in in the test. Mm-hmm. The test shoots that were like a year prior, she was Lee. Interesting. And why why did they need to get it done? Uh, looking at why didn't they just wait? Uh, she was doing a home birth, and so she didn't want people in her house. No, I just meant like, why didn't they wait until after she had her kid? I don't know. They might have been beholden to their production company. Yeah. I mean, if every every other actor probably had a schedule, so yeah. and also like maybe you know the cameraman, etc. What did they like? I mean, they had nine months of knowing that she was going to have a kid. When well, when no, they... they so they did it. They did the test screening, but once a production pump company picks it up, presumably you have a schedule to keep. For Got you. Movie, okay, right? I was just wondering, like, what the uh, timeline was for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know the exact circumstances there. I just know that she said five days. Uh, 
Are you? I say four days. That's what I think. No, I mean, all the trivia I've read says five days. <laughs> um, anyway, we can, we can go to scores. Luke, what would you give this movie? I'm between a six and a seven. Okay. I think I'm going to go with a seven. seven all right. Out of ten. Jonathan? This one. I'm going to go with a six, but it's closer to a seven than a five. This is really interesting because from the the short and sweets, it sounded like Luke was going to rate this lower than Jonathan. I thought, yeah. I thought Luke was going to give this a five. <laughs> uh, um, so did, yeah, I thought he was going to be either negative or completely neutral. Uh, well, I got to give respect, you know, to what they did with the budget they did, and I like a lot of the reason why I didn't like it. I understand it's because I'm I'm a little like bitch when it comes to like audio and video quality things. Hmm. With that being said, I ended up liking the movie. I thought the beginning was terrible, but it did get better. So, so we've got seven. We're just going to fill this into our, our spreadsheet. Got a, a seven from Luke. You said six, Jonathan? I did. Okay. Um, I think I'd give this movie an eight. Hmm. I, I really like this movie. This is, again, uh, much like Snowpiercer. This is my third time seeing this movie. Um, okay. I, I really like it. I, I enjoy this. This is a movie that I show to people. I'm like, hey, you're looking for some weird sci-fi shit. Like, if, if somebody watched, like, Primer, and they're like, oh, you know, that was that was really interesting. Do you, do you know anything else like that? I'd be like, watch Coherence. Similar. It's fun. Um, I do agree. I think it's, like, it's a... I would recommend it. I just don't think I'd go out of my way to watch it. I think, like, I would sure. show somebody this movie, but I wouldn't, like... Yeah, I wouldn't show someone this movie, but I would uh, really? recommend it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't show everybody yeah. this movie. I would show no, no, I would some people this movie. To people who wanted like a oh, like a thinky movie, you know. Like, Wait, what, know. Do you, what do you mean? This isn't this isn't top of my list for like recommends at all. No, That's why it's a six. I, I would recommend movie. plenty of episodes of Twilight Zone over this, but um, so that gives it an aggregate score of seven, making it our third highest movie uh, mm-hmm. so far. It's super high. Uh, so, next pick belongs to Luke. Or is it going to be a rando? What do you mean by a rando? Like, are we going to do a random every fourth and then go back? How how would we do a random? Just something like we did basically with Tenet. Well, Tenet was Jonathan's pick. Technically, it was, but it was more of a random. I mean, it was it was I only, prior. I only, I only picked it because it was topical. Of- Okay, so if this is something we want to do, we should actually figure it out now. Because Tenet and Snowpiercer weren't actual picks; it was just things that happened. So we got. I don't really, I don't really care. I think that we should stick to the the one, two, three. Okay. If we're just going to do straight picks, okay. okay. I, I don't, I don't mind the idea of like having maybe, uh, external maybe every, suggestions at some point. Yeah, maybe every like couple of weeks we could have like a, a what's newest out. Yeah, that yeah. could work. Or like listener suggested, or if we ever. I mean, I know Luke isn't listen, keen on a yeah. guest, but if we ever felt a guest. If we ever had listeners, we could get some listener suggestions. Oh, we have some listeners. <laughs> we, have, we have listeners. We have. We we've we've gotten comment. two comments. Two comments. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. If any listeners. That's listen, two more than I expected. If you comment any movie, we will do it. <laughs> any movie. <laughs> not any movie. I will not do the item unless I am paid. Um, I guess any movie other than I, that. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind the idea of uh, <laughs> rotating in. I. I just don't think because we've not planned for it. It's a little difficult to do on this next week. Yeah. Um, so we could start that after next rotation. Cut it in. Uh, do you? Do you have any movies in mind? Or are you gonna keep it close to your chest? Or what? Going on? Well, I, I do have one, and I just want to know. I, I think Brennan's seen it, but. Jonathan, have you seen Pan's Labyrinth? Yes. You have? Kind of kind of recently because you recommended it. Oh, but okay. I don't care if we've seen it as long as we have stuff to I think say. I think I'll pick another movie then. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think it's fine as long as we have stuff to say because we haven't talked about it. Indeed. But it's up to you. So no, no pick announcement for this week? No pick yet. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if anybody has any suggestions, we can cut those in at some point. Uh, they may get vetoed if it's a movie we hate. Um, or that we've all seen or that we're all going to have the same exact opinions. Yeah. Like, I feel like 
Jurassic Park. We'd all have very similar opinions. Sometimes it's fun. Though. I've read the book at know. least. I could bring that to the table. Ooh. For Jurassic World, me and my friends talked about like how awful it was for three hours, and it was great. The first so, one or the second one? The <laughs> second one, Jurassic World 2. Jurassic oh, yeah. World 1 was like okay. No, Jurassic World 1 was also Jurassic really World, bad. It was Jurassic bad. World. It was bad, but like I'm talking like... All right, Luke, pick Jurassic World. We'll talk about this next week. <laughs> We're Jurassic World that. One was fine. It, was. it, just it had wasn't. Visuals. No, no, it wasn't. The visuals were fine. Not the plot a good was movie. ridiculously stupid. You're wrong. The visuals were fine. It was it was a good looking movie, but like the plot was the shit. Visuals were bad. The, I'm not saying plot. it was a good movie. I said it was a fine. <laughs> okay, well we're I'm not saying it's like a. Listen, we're not. We're still on fucking mic here. All right, we can talk <laughs> about this after we end the episode, or we can do a yeah. Jurassic World episode. No. It's not. <laughs> I might, right, I'd I might, rather watch. Jurassic I might Park pick too. Jurassic World now. Fine, but I'd rather watch <laughs> Jurassic Park too. So that movie sucks too. Um, anyway, uh, it's <laughs> we're ending now. We're done. We're done with it. We can talk about this when I end this podcast. That's it. Um, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with an as yet not determined or as to be determined movie. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Indeed. <laughs>